What's up everybody? This is your man Mr. No Edit and this is my new show, The Mr. No Edit Show. The Mr. Mr. No, no Edit, Edit show. show. Today, I've said this many times, special guests. This right here is special guests to the ninth power. Okay? Very, 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 very special guests. My man, all our man. From Detroit, Fast Freddy. Oh, that, that, okay. That, 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 was that an okay intro? Okay. Okay. Talking about no edit. No, <laughs> no, no whole bar. You're going to get the real thing from the foundation up. All right. Dig great, that, great. Dig that. Okay, so we have a seat right here. All right. And uh, man, it is, I'm sure you know this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is such an honor. Such an honor. And I mean that. It's an honor to be here, really it is, you know, because that's what you do. know about your future, you got to find out a little about your past. Yeah. And we can you know, braid that together. It's unstoppable thing. Unstoppable. That's actually the name of the dance we got. He, he did not know that. No. Didn't have I'm not paid to say that. <laughs> he just had it meant to be. So we're going to dive right in with you, Fast Freddy, because you have a. We actually could do a part two. A little date when you when you're available. Well, whatever, right. I'm making myself available because, like I say, I'm a Detroit um, dancer, a fun person. So anything I can do to protect and keep things going forward, be my pleasure. Okay. Now, uh, this is the Mission No Edit Show, so we don't allow any edits. We have a door open. There's a little noise, so me and Fast Freddy are going to speak up as loud as we can. I want to make sure that you hear this. No subtitles. You're going to hear this. So we're going to start real quick with a little history with dance. And I know that may be a little difficult because you have a, this guy, man. He did, what you see on the scene is not, on, that's not, that's not it. He has a repertoire, okay? Uh, but if you can just, just kind of skip through when you were young, maybe when you first danced and maybe what, what, what uh, motivated you to dance or what inspired you. Well, I have to say this, uh, what motivated me to do it, um, um, my, my parents, you know, back in the day, older, everything was tight, you had to be in with the street lights and everything. Can, so, can we get a year? Oh, we talking around. back, we talking about in the early 40s, 50s, you know, so because I've been around a while. But, you know, everything was so regimented, so you had a certain time limit to do things, mm -hmm. so you try to put as much fun in that time as you can. So, of course, music has been around forever. So we went that Motown thing, so it was always okay, music. Okay. And everybody came up with dancing, so we were like watching things like American Bandstand and Soul Train and things like that. So naturally, you imitate what you see. Okay, makes and, sense. And then we were always musical people, but we still had limits to what our parents let us do and what we could do. So when we were on our own, we were creative. Okay, so back then when you were uh, a kid, American Bandstand, uh, your household was orderly. Oh, very orderly. Okay, so what's maybe two or three artists that maybe your family wasn't into, or could be, but you were, what, what caught your eye? Like, was it a James Brown? Was it a oh, yeah, definitely. Name? James Brown was just, that was it for me. I mean, that, that, you talking about the Jitten thing? You know, Michael Jackson, That's a lot of people got his thing from James Brown. James Brown was a movie, you know. And that caught my eye for, for a guy who can do that, do that little slide thing, come on back and do a triple spin and stop. Oh, well, of course, that's the first thing you want to try to imitate. You know, that was that was that was one of my biggest uh, biggest things that really really interested me. Well, was was there a close second? Uh, uh, Jackie Wilson. I was, that's what I was thinking back to my mind. Jackie Wilson, you know, he can move. Yeah, he can move. So the movements, you know, the doo woppers were good, you know. But uh, the, what caught my interest was the, the movers and the shapers, you know. Okay, and you had mentioned uh, uh, JIT. Um, what, what, we were talking a little earlier about uh, uh, the jazz styles, the, uh, the tap. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, uh, again, too, by us being uh, so regimented, we were in the house a lot. So we, TV was a big thing for us, so you watch the old movies, most of the blacks were like tap dancers. Mm. You know, Fred Astaire, they did all the glad and stuff. Now this is before most of them. Oh, before, way before. Okay. We talk about we talk about in my parents' days. Gotcha. We were watching 
See, you, you, as a kid, you imitate what you see, whatever you are exposed to. That's so we're exposed to that type of thing first, and then it's graduated into different things, because different things come about. So first we were watching things like uh, Fred Astaire movies and all those kind of things, and then you snuck in with the uh, Soul Train and American Bandstand. So whatever you saw, you tried to uh, emulate it. You okay. Know? And in, in your uh, basically your theory would be that kind of um, turn into what we now call jit. Oh yeah, without a doubt. It, it, okay. okay. I would say that was to me that would be the same one as foundation of it. The later found the, the tap thing, the tap dance because it was a movement thing, and I think James Brown was doing more or less that tap thing, but then he got that little slide yeah, in there and that true. Little, little footwork thing. So you figure the tap dancing, like I said, when you tap it, you start out, but just the thing where you got to put your body into it. You got to put a little movement in into it. The more movement, the more creative you get. But the most important thing in anything is timing. Timing. Time is the most important thing. You know, you don't want to look like no puppet with broke strings. Mm, or like you know, a robot. Right. So if you can do it, and then being able to repeat it, you know, you might make a step and say, do it again. So I don't know what I did. <laughs> Timing helps. Timing helps that. Now, now, can you take us through the um, different things you were in because of dance? Like the group you were in that oh, yeah. traveled. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. So, of course, like when we got to be teenagers, well, we could go out. Okay, We used to go to the, all, all to the 20 grand and it was the most popular thing back in my day. And we saw all the entertainers. Mm. So whatever they did, we emulated. That, that was our kind of music. So the Temptations. That was like, okay, Motown. You know, like Motown. Motown was a big thing, part of our lives. Uh -huh. So when you see the Temptations doing this, mm -hmm. and doing that, you say, well, look, I can do something else with <laughs> So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to spin around. Give it a twist. Yeah. But the Temptations, they introduced to a, uh, groups like that. The temptations and Smokey Robinson and Milk and different people like that. That was my, you know, in my era, my inspiration. And that would uh, inspire you to, to, to create your own group? Oh, yeah. To and be what was the name of your group? I, I had a group called Professionals. We was called Professionals. And uh, we used to make up our little dances and things. And then we uh, started going down 20 grand and started getting in the competitive thing. You, mm -hmm. have, you have contests. And I was good with the contest thing. You, you know, got a wedding? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, did. I had a good rep, a good run with that for a long time. That's where the thing Fast Freddie came in, you know. Oh, is that right? Like, well, actually, between the dancing and the modeling, you know, because I modeled too. Back then? Yeah, back then. Yeah, I started modeling when I was about 17. That's right. Quick note, you were always dressing like this. Always. This, my, was, this didn't come out the you blue. You know, I give it credit to my parents. My mother and father were sharp people. You know, the old movies, you, the old things you see, like uh, Lucille Ball and... and uh, these these TV shows that you've seen, that, well, of course, with lights. My mother was like that. I oh, never seen my mother. She never had hair all over her head. She was always neat. She always had on a dress. It was always pressed. And like you Even said, though she was a housewife. Kids emulate what they see. And, and then my dad. My dad worked two factory jobs. Wow. But when he went to work, he had a nice shirt, nice red pants. He went and changed clothes, worked, took a shower, came out. A lot of people never know he worked in the factory. My father worked two factory jobs. Mm. We used to pick drop him off at 1 in the morning, come back in the afternoon, drop him off the other one, and my mother, we put our pajamas on and our coats in the wintertime and go pick my father up because we had one car. Wow. So fast forward back, you were at the uh, 20 grand yeah. with, the, with the professionals, mm -hmm. um, and you were modeling at the same time. Uh, you guys started uh, dancing with certain groups uh, or, or touring? Well, we started with our, just by ourselves. And then we uh, had a guy that took an interest in us, and then he got us, uh, you know, like the Motown Review, they used to have small things. It, it was a Motown Review was just, you know, every every so often. Okay. But they, you know, like uh, like now, you go to parties and cabarets and parties, mm -hmm. they start having us come to cabarets and parties because they like the little oh, routine and make it to perform. So that's what it, that's what, uh, it, it escalated into. And then our biggest break, where we got a chance to, where the guy had a connection with uh Sam and Dave, that's back in the, your parents' days. The, Sam and Dave, they were, uh, we got a chance to be at Cobo Hall with them. Oh, okay. And they were then, singers. Yeah, they were mm -hmm. singers. And uh, the uh, 
it was a, a show that came from Canada, Swinging Time. It was like a dance show, same thing. Okay. Swinging Time. And uh, the guy from Swinging Time saw us at the Sam and Dave thing. He brought us on TV, and then it escalated from there. We traveled for about 10, 15 years. Are, are you familiar with, uh, well, you know what, I'll, I'll ask you about that later. Um, so, real quick, really quick, the scene. How did that happen? Because you had mentioned that that wasn't yeah. really meant. It was no. kind of a mistake. Yeah, it was, it was just a, a, a kind of a, a, I would say a fluke. Well, and when I was modeling, I was modeling for the boutique shop, a, 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 a oh. clothing store. It was called, um, and we uh, they wanted to model their garments on TV. So they selected myself and three other guys. And during the commercial time, we modeled their suits. It was called HPT House of Fashion. Okay. And uh, we go in there and model in their suits and stuff. But see, I, when I came in, I, I, I was trying to be sharp anyway. I wore suits all the time. Mm. So the girl, LaWanda, one of the most popular girls on yeah, there. Yeah, Because she was a little older. And she was a model too. Okay. Yeah, but she's a school oh, teacher she now. She's a school teacher now. But she, by me being older, I looked, I had a suit on the same color her dress that day. And I was waiting to do my little thing. And I'm dancing on the side. I'm having a good time. I'm, I got my own party going now. The kids dancing. I'm dancing. They say, hey, well, that don't look too bad. Why don't you get up on the riser with her and dance? And I was doing I had my own little thing going, you know. So people just started writing in, well, who was he? He looks really good, you know. And they, they talked me into it. So I started doing it on a weekly basis. Okay. And I ended up doing it for 10 years. Wow. And at that time, that was a, a, a thing for kids. Teenagers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were 15, 16, 17, maybe, some maybe 18. But I was 35. Wow. But they well, said no, we, we didn't we didn't care. But they say you look good you and did. It, was a, it was a new twist to it. So it, it escalated uh, to We always appreciate you because it always well you were doing what we would call it a jit. Yeah. Uh so the last question regarding Dan, oh let's probably come up again, but my last question would be, uh, when did you first see what we call Jenny. Well, I tell you, it goes back to my neighborhood, again, my childhood, teenagers, you know, when I finally, uh, you know, parents let cut the rope a little bit, let me get out, mm -hmm. we had a thing called the canteen, which is a community center. Okay. See, E. Coach, River Ridge, and South Coast Detroit is together, but you on one side of the street, you're in River Ridge, the other side, you're in E. Coach, but it's all connected. Gotcha. So we would go to this uh, thing called Tuesday night called the canteen. That's why we danced and let our hand out. Yeah, it was like a club. And, and this was an e-course? Yeah, it was an e-course. And about what year? I have to say, that was before my mother passed. I'd say 63. 63. 63. And that's when you first seen, I mean, I, I know it was a gradual change yeah. from, from... I um, had seen it, but I hadn't seen it, been able to participate in it and see it enough to, 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 to calculate what was going on because I had a curfew to be there. But, but that's what you were called, Jitterbug. Yeah. And who was it? Uh, 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 two, uh, guy, two cousins named Bobby and Ralph. I can't think of their name now. It's been way back. But they were bad. They had some routines. And they were doing the uh, they were break down. Doing break and down and they do splits and they had a, a dynamite routine. And I don't care how good the party was going, when Ralph and Bobby, when they came in, everybody cleared the floor and let them do their thing because it's just excitement. Even like now, I don't care where you go, um, even my area now, ballrooming and stepping, mm -hmm. sometimes they want to see the ones that's a little creative. They want to see something a little different. Yeah. So they'll step back a little bit. Okay. But okay. now it's become so popular, everybody, a lot of people is into it. It's a universal thing now. And can you just name off the dances that you know, that you do? Well, right now I'm into ballrooming, bopping, jitting. Uh, cha cha, stepping, and uh, a long time ago, the uh, ballroom dancing it used to be you use up the whole floor. You don't use one square. Mm. That just like uh, if you go back to even before that, those movies like Fred Astaire and Ginger yeah, yeah, Rogers, yeah, like yeah. the waltz right. thing. Right. Yeah. Well, we well, they stretched the ballroom thing out to that. The old fellas used to do it, but they used to have this little thing where they. Get them when they when they, they had the girl wrapped up close. and they close and they get this little thumb going. That was just the thing that you was you was tough. And all while you was doing it, this little thumb was working. It was oh, just so like, you, he's holding it was her just hand. Little trade. But no, no, you hit yeah. well one hand was up here and one was around the lady. Man, you close, you got them mm -hmm. where they 
every move mm -hmm. is it's right there. Just like you you're right there. You got it right next to you. You actually you becoming one. I see. The that's what it is. The one. movement, you know, everything. You know, yeah. that's just like they, they even if you take it back to Watson and Ballerina, when it comes to a couple things, you got to to make it effective. You gotta look at like it's effortless, mm. like you doing it as one. Uh, if you go back to group, Michael Jackson and his brothers. You, when you see some of the routines they get mm. and the hours they must have put into it, it, you know, the time it shows. It shows, it's worth it. And it and it excites other people that can't do it, that might want to do it. That may not even attempt to do it, but just to see, you know. Entertainment. Yeah. So what if you're exposed to? Sometimes it takes a, a, a great turn in your life, you know. Okay. Uh, now, for those who don't know, Fast Freddie, as you just said, was a model, and I'd like for you to share with them uh, one of your. I take it as one of your greatest accomplishments with uh, GQ Magazine. Yeah. Well, after well, I've been doing it a long time. I started doing it around the time. But when my mother passed away, uh, I was 19, oh. and um, uh, always been, you know, like to dress. And I worked downtown selling women's shoes at the old Hudson's downtown. Okay. And I was a pretty decent looking guy there. And of course, you get the attention when you're sharp. And uh, the buyers used to come in the store. So women's shoes, so all the women knew it was. They said, oh, it's so sharp. They used to wait at the door to see what I had on when I came in. <laughs> but it was a very uniform thing. Back in the day, you couldn't wear all the colors and all the flashy stuff. Back in the day, you had to wear, men and we were allowed to wear black, blue, brown, or gray suits. No loud colors. It was white shirts, shirt and tie. It had to be tied. had to be a little bit. But see, I got hip to it. I got the learn how to break the rules. When Hudson still came out with pastel colored shirts, yeah. like the pinks and the mint greens and the things like that, I would go buy those shirts. But at the time, they didn't have pocket handkerchiefs to go with, like this thing here. So I would, go in the, I would go in the ladies' department and buy handkerchiefs to match my shirt. I started coordinating. Then I started buying a little little frame with ties. You did that, you did that on your own? On you didn't see anybody doing that? No, I didn't see. Well, you know, I guess in back in the movies like Clark Gable and oh, the old guys, see. you see how sharp. Oh, Elliot Ness. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, they were sharp. Yeah, they were. That's what you know. That's the kind of thing that I like to be. That's the thing I'm emulated. You know, not gangsters, but just being sharp and gotcha. plus looking good. Gotcha. But I didn't do it for the attention. I did it because it made me feel good. I see. That's how my household was. That's what my parents were. So with anything you do, it's you got it's it's got to get your attention. But you, you the one that have to make it right, make it stick, make it positive. And that's what dancing is, because dancing is just a universal, it's good for your heart, it's good yeah. for your mind, it's a stress reliever. Emotion. People, emotion, people like it. You like seeing it, sometimes you like doing it. It can be a show off thing, but the ability, getting your ability. It's like an athlete, football yeah. player, yeah. basketball player. You keep doing it, keep doing it, you get better and better, and people emulate and appreciate you. Mm. So, and, that, and that reminds me, to give a shout out to Al Woods. Uh, I was talking to Al Woods and we were talking about you, and sure enough, he said he knew you. Yeah. And uh, Now that's the guy that truly loves dancing. Al Woods? Al Woods loved dancing because he created some things with really. <laughs> yes, himself. Yes, he did. He had his own style and it was an un uh, un unchangeable thing. And uh, people used to imitate him and a lot of times, things that he created, he really didn't get credit for. He was, uh, he was We interviewed him a while back and we actually had him showcasing the dances. Mr. No at the show. I usually dance when I hear it. I, I... Oh yeah. And then you know I got you with the well with your, your dance group, that, that that little mannequin thing. Oh, yeah, that came y'all y'all put that y'all put that to work. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Um but we had Al Woods real quick doing a German Smurf, doing a Jag walk, and doing yeah, an outfit, yeah. showing the world that he created it. And I was telling him face to face, I used to do those dances. I mastered those dances yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And it was just good being able to give him that credit. Oh, yeah. See, a lot of people don't investigate it, so a lot of people jump up and take credit for it. Mm. But even the things that we're doing now were done before our time. If you go back to the tap dances, these guys, back in the day, guys called the Step Brothers. They used to be in those Shirley it Temple movies and all those old movies. Mm -hmm. And they would they would do some things and, and, and run up the wall and turn a flip and come back and give each other a play and never stop. 
So all those big productions and things you see, it, it and you can kind of see, see it, it in what we you do see now. It, right, right. But a lot of people don't want to face that. They don't want to. But you to get to your future, you got to know a little bit about your past. Yes. Gotcha. You can you can see the elevation of. It. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Um, so I wanted to touch on your birthday coming up, oh, yeah. and you have some big plans and things that you want to do for the community. Would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, well, uh, like I said, I am a people person. And I like, you know, I, love, I love dancing and having a good time, and I love dressing and things. And I've been blessed. I will be 70 years old, September. 70, and looking good. And I still dance, I still dress up every day. I'm a pretty well known figure. God has been so good to me. Teaching classes? Teaching class. I teach classes every day. I do seniors, I do kids. I even got a thing for people that are wheelchair bound. I got a thing called getting down while you sit around in wow. chairs. You know the line dancing they do? Yeah. I got chair versions of them for people that can't sit. So stay. they can do it together? Yeah. Or either, a lot of times, see, another thing too, it's like you go to a party and the jitters, okay? You get out there and jit, everybody want to do it, but then there's a time that they want to get involved. So I teach them how to do it even in their chair. They forget about the people that can't do it. See. Forget about the people that are sitting down. So this is a way to get everybody involved. But my birthday is coming up and what I'm doing, I'm so happy to see, uh, to have an opportunity to do this. Um, looking good makes you feel good. So what I want to do, uh, a lot of young people have got away from the fashion thing, but you got to get in where you fit in. Sometimes you got to dress it up, take it up a notch. I'm not saying wear a suit and tie and all that. Just clean yourself up and know how to get into these interviews. Because sometimes when you go into an interview or to do anything, the first the first impression is the last impression. So you got to. So what we want to do, what I want to do, is take. Uh, Get some votes in, and, and people give me some information on three young men, and you know how women get makeovers. Yes, I want to give three guys a makeover. Oh, now yeah. how, how how would they vote? How who how would they contact? You? Well, I got yes, on the flyer. Yeah, gonna fly. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I got it. Miss Noel, I'm going. Go. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I've got a, a, a flyer that's gonna be out. It's gonna be these things gonna be all over the city. It's a way to contact me get in touch with me because we're going to nominate three young men. We're not just talking about somebody sitting at the bus stop. We're some men that's really trying and want the effort. Uh, uh, can't trying to get into trying, the workforce. Trying to get into the workforce or uh, just, just to be recognized to, to open some doors for themselves. So what I want to do uh, along with this young man, uh, he's running, he's uh, Isaac Robinson. He's a lawyer. He's running to be a judge now. Oh, I see. And he's, I've been knowing he and his family a long time and he's helping me out. So okay. we stretch this thing out. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna give uh, get these young men makeovers and try to point them in the directions of getting jobs and doing some bigger things for themselves. You know, because so many uh, so many people out here got creative talents. Just like you're a dancer and you might have a studio, uh, just some inspirations to put them in the right direction. They may not have family to help them out. Mm -hmm. So it's just some uh, my way of giving back. And what date will that be? That's going to be on October the second. My birthday is the 29th of September, but I'm having a party at the Northwest Fifty Center, October the second. Okay. But these flyers will be all over the city. There will be a number, and we're going to have a few things before that to let people know. I want to try to. So when you see that, uh, most this people right here. Flip this right here. I just want to be able to show this right now. Most people know about Fast Freddy. I've been around a long time, so when you see these flyers, pick them up and call in and get some information if, about if, it. If this doesn't, just so people can be aware when they, if they happen to see this, they'll know. Pick, and I'm also pick this up, yeah. and I'll, I'll I'll put some information okay. actually on this interview. Yeah, and I'm looking for a little help here because I'm looking for some sponsors to help me out. You know, I mean, like I would I would love to be able to do it. But, you know, I've got. Grandkids working on me now. My kids are grown, but I, I I need some help with this. So I, I got some stores that are going to help me. So I'm trying to look for some sponsors, some people with some ideas to help me project this, put this together. Oh, okay. So my way I'm celebrating my birthday is not only let God give me this 70th birthday, but to be able to pass something on, leave a legacy, and give some people, some young people, some inspiration. That's great. Just like this thing here, being here with you is just a pleasure because I'm meeting young men that's in the dancing and activity and fun and doing different things and creative things. So keeping on things that you've done. Yeah, things that I've done and things that I can relate to 
things I can put some input in and be a part of and pass up and give some people some inspiration because that's half the battle having some inspiration. Definitely. 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 So you all inspire me and I hope I inspire you all. But this is a great opportunity to let people know that people are out here trying to do good things. And this dancing thing, like we said, it's a multi-purpose thing. Mm. Dancing is fun, it's energetic, it's a stress reliever, and just things you can do together. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, is there uh, any last thoughts, any last words you would like to, is there anything that's been on your mind outside of what we already talked about? Or you could just elaborate on some things you've said, but just the last word you want to leave the people with. Well, I just, uh, just being a, a true Detroiter, you know, we've got some bad press in the, in the past, but uh, you know, no matter where you go, you got to go back, you can go back home. And this is home for me, and I, I want everybody to know we need to start sticking together, pulling together, making Detroit a more positive entity, and that's what I'm trying to do, be positive and relate with people like yourself that's doing things so we can interact, pass these things on to our children, and give people hope that don't have hope. So some of these ideas we put together and just generate special things. So I'm just happy to be a part of this. All right. All right. So uh, on behalf of the Mr. Noetta Show, and I will say on behalf of the JIT community because they are out there. And I want to give Al Woods a little shout out because he's the one that kind of connected me with this. Yes, sir. So he's a, he's a, he's a heck of a guy and he's in the workforce now, so that's, that's cut his dancing thing down, but I know his heart is there. He he's loves still, being, uh, he's still another that. guy too. Love guy, loves to be sharp, a, a good people person, a good inspiring person. So he's connected us together, so hopefully we can sp spread this love and uh, get this JIT thing and find out what's going on, get people some things to do. <laughs> We appreciate having you here. Indeed, my pleasure. Okay, and um, Mr. No Ed is signing out. We love you. Goodbye.